welcome to this episode of Psych Media. Now, today we're going to be talking about Captain Planet, about how the media can change our attitudes, and just how psychology goes about measuring attitudes. This episode will also star data that you help to provide. So, a little bit of background. Captain Planet and the Planeteers was an animated TV show that ran from 1990 to 1992, with a follow-up sequel series, The New Adventures of Captain Planet, that ran from 1993 to 1996. Both series are still in syndication, at least that's what my sources say. Environmentalism and environmental attitudes changed a lot in the 1980s and 90s. New initiatives in schools tried to foster a healthy respect for the Earth in a time when global warming and climate change were facts, not controversies. This was a chance to build a better world. These programs did have an effect. Remember the ozone hole over the Antarctic? Awareness and a global decrease in CFCs led to that hole's growth halting and now progressing towards healing. For a while, it really looked like we were turning the corner and fixing some of the damage that we'd done. So enter this new show with a catchy theme song, celebrity voice acting, toy line, and a strong environmental message. Gaia, spirit of the earth, chose five teens and bestowed upon them magical rings, each representing a facet of life on the planet. When they bring those rings together, they create the superhero Captain Planet. Representing America, Asia, Africa, Europe, and South America, the Planeteers rooted out and foiled any threats to the environment and humanity. The show also tackled heavy social issues like substance abuse, HIV and AIDS, and there was even an episode set in Belfast during the Troubles. Personal disclosure, I actually never liked the show when I was younger. I was already environmentally conscious and I felt that it was too cheesy and heavy-handed. The villains always said, evil nefarious reasons for pollution, but they were never the actual realistic physical reasons that I saw in the world around me. Okay, so I was the outlier it seems because a lot of people really liked it. And in research for this episode, I found tons of positive press from the early 90s, praising it for its awareness and educational impact. And a lot of people that I talked to said it really made them think about the environment. When the goal of anything is to affect change, and here it would be a change in attitudes, how do you know when you reach your goal? That is to say, how do you measure something as personal and imprecise as an attitude? I'm glad you asked because in psychology, we do it all the time. There are hundreds of tested and mathematically validated scales for use in measuring attitudes from everything from racism to political affiliation to symptoms of psychopathology like depression, psychosis, or anxiety. They have built-in error margins and reliability statistics. I found several papers citing Captain Planet, but nothing peer-reviewed examining the show's impact on a population level. The closest I could find was an examination of media influence on environmental thinking as a social construct. So did Captain Planet have an effect? There's one way to find out. So I decided to conduct a study to see how the show affected my audience's attitudes on the environment. Since I measured a pre-existing variable, that's attitude, instead of testing one variable's effect on another, this is a study, not an experiment. There's also no random allocation, which is a critical factor in experimental design. I designed a short survey and published the link on my social media accounts. We got 63 respondents and enough data for a reasonable study. Our hypothesis is, Watching Captain Planet affected the viewers' attitudes towards the environment in a positive manner. I collected demographics first. Because we're not concerned with age, I asked for it in decade categories. Next, I asked for gender and take note future researchers. Always give the option, prefer not to say, other or non-binary for gender, unless you're specifically researching a gender effect. I asked for the country where respondents grew up, figuring the majority would be English-speaking countries, and I was correct. All of these variables are demographic, since we're not considering them in our hypothesis or analysis. Age won't even factor in due to older TV shows being available by streaming or on YouTube. Next, I asked if the respondents watched Captain Planet. Eight respondents didn't, and while some selected not applicable for the rest of the survey, some provided their attitude, so they were at least aware of the show. As a researcher, I made the call to include their information in our overall analysis. So, did the show have an effect on environmental attitudes? I used a one-question scale phrased in Likert-type format. This allowed me to give a rating range of impact rather than asking several follow-up questions. A respondent can indicate positive, negative, or no effect, and the degree of that effect. While most respondents answered that the show had no effect on their attitude, 54% of the overall sample reported a range of positive effects, from large positive to small positive. In this sample population, it's accurate to say that a majority experienced a positive change in environmental attitudes due to Captain Planet. I also asked if respondents enjoyed Captain Planet and they overwhelmingly did. Then I included a qualitative question, asking if there was anything else they wanted to say about the show. Qualitative data is analyzed differently than quantitative, so I chose to represent that data with a word cloud. 
Okay, real talk. Is this study scientific? Well, yes and no. It's a good example of how to quickly analyze a simple attitude in a sample population, but it does have methodological issues, and the sample is far too small to be able to generalize these results to a larger population. So what about you? Did Captain Planet or another show change your attitudes about a major issue? Do you think these shows are beneficial to children and ultimately adults, or do they differ from straight educational shows? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so big, huge thanks to the 63 respondents who generously gave their time to take this survey. Today, you've been part of the scientific and research process, be it only on the small scale, and that's okay. Go on and treat yourself to something special. Well, that's been this episode of Psych Media. Please like and subscribe if you feel moved to do so. And if you did want to support me or the show, there's a link to my Patreon in the description box below. Bye now. Thank you to the following patrons with an especial thank you to Gomer, Nate Watson, and Ed Pelnick.